Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Germany once again, and this is another one of the beers that I brought back when I was over in Munich very recently. So this time we're going to go to Augsburg. I believe this is my first ever beer review from the city of Augsburg. So we're going to visit one of their famous breweries, actually. This is from Riegele Beer Manufacturer, and it's actually a collaboration beer that they did with Sierra Nevada from over in Chico in California, one of the kind of pinnacle American craft breweries, if you like. So this one is called the Bayerische Ale Zwei, and it's an American pale ale at 5% ABV. This one was first brewed actually in 2016, I believe, for the Oktoberfest in Augsburg, and Ken Grossman did actually go over and brew this with the guys from Regalis. So really quite cool, actually, and it is cool to see one of these really traditional German breweries cooperating with one of the kind of pinnacle American breweries as well, because Germany, Germany, of course, has that really kind of old beer heritage, whereas America is kind of new to the game in that way, but many, of course, do consider them America to have the best kind of craft beer and things. So it's a really cool collaboration this and one that I'm definitely looking forward to trying. So I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here. If you want to get straight to the tasting, of course, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website. It's the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Brauhaus Regal. The very first time I'm encountering this brewery, of course, there is a link down there to my Sierra Nevada reviews as well. I think I've reviewed about 10 of their beers and no doubt I will do more in the near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city or state, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there both for my American beer reviews and for the German beer reviews. Both of those are being constantly added to, of course, and please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the channel and the support that you give it is hugely appreciated. And if you are particularly interested in German beer, do make sure you check out my friend Peter over at The Clueless Drinker. He's got a really nice channel and I'll put that in the description for you as well. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Regal at Brauhaus then. So as I mentioned to you, these guys are from Augsburg in Bavaria, which is a little bit to the northwest of the city of Munich. And this brewery has existed in its current form since 1884 when Sebastian Regal acquired the Zoom Golden and Rossblauerei. So this actually, the first brewery here actually traces its roots back to the year 1386 when it was first run by the Schmidt family but it passed through their descendants over the coming years and the name changed to Meyer, Geyer, Greer, Hildbrand, Müller, Bayem, Wildemann and also Degmeier due to the various marriages. It seemed to be that these families seemed to have a lot of daughters and it was the daughters that took over the running of the brewery and of course when they married the name of the proprietor actually changed. But in 1717 Regina Degmeier actually stole the brewery to the Heinzelmann family from Leutkirch and it stayed with them for two generations before being sold to Sebastian Boyle in 1786 who held the brewery and his family for four generations before the sale to the Regal family that we mentioned a little while ago in 1884. So in 1911 the brewery constructed the Regal House in Königsplatz in the city of Augsburg along with another building for their main production outside of the city. But the Regal House contains the original beer hall for the brewery and it's now a protected monument. It's considered very important to the heritage of the city of Augsburg and it's now a hotel and a restaurant and things like this so if you do find yourself in Augsburg you can actually go and have a look at this. It's supposed to be a really pretty city and it's one that I definitely need to go and visit and it has been getting a bit more well known recently because the Bundesliga team uh, Augsburg have actually been doing it fairly well but the brewery's passed down the Regal family for the for six generations now and it's now jointly run by father and son Dr Sebastian Prilla and Sebastian Prilla Regal and the son of course is actually quite a well known beer sommelier from what I understand and the previous generation of the brewery before these to. It was actually an old uh, Air Force major, I believe. Uh, he had retired from the Wehrmacht. He trained as a, sorry, not as the Wehrmacht, from the Luftwaffe or, or the German Armed Forces, and he trained as a Braumaster, and his wife was also quite instrumental in running the brewery as well. And they guided it through some pretty hard times before these guys have taken over. But it is quite cool to try my first beer from Augsburg from one of the quite prominent and well-known breweries. So hopefully I can actually go and visit their restaurant and hotel sometime. That would be really quite nice. But Augsburg, as I say, is supposed to be a nice city, and if you find yourself in Munich, I think it's only about an hour and a half or an hour away on the train. So go and explore Bavaria. It's a very beautiful part of the world. But anyway, on 
on to Sierra Nevada then. So you've heard me talk about these guys before. So Sierra Nevada were founded back in 1979 in Chico in California when the founders Ken Grossman and Paul Camusi decided to expand their home brewing hobby and found a brewery properly. So Ken had basically visited some friends in the Chico area uh, who were studying at the local university and he fell in love with the, with the area and decided that he wanted to move there. So he opened up a home brewing store which was simply called the Home Brew Store and he met Paul Camusi and they decided to start home brewing together but together they decided to found a brewery in 1983 and they built much of their, uh, their original brewing equipment out of recycled dairy equipment as well and in 1983 they officially opened the brewery with a portfolio of three beers and this of course was when the uh, the, the famous Sierra Nevada Paleo was born but over the coming years they continually expanded and in 1987 they purchased the 20th Street plot which has been their home ever since and with their, their tap room actually opened that year in 1989 but Paul Camusi retired in 1998 so the brewery has since been solely the property of Ken Grossman but in 2008 they introduced their beer camp event and this is where various kind of bar owners and restaurant owners from the local area can go into the brewery and get a hands-on experience and there's always a lot of experimental beers come out of that so whenever you see the beer camp beers from Sierra Nevada those are the ones that I really do recommend that you try and since 2010 they've also had a partnership with the new Clairvaux Abbey in Northern California and they've been producing some kind of Trappist style beers there as well and I think there have actually been efforts to get this uh, this this abbey officially recognised by the Trappist Association so you may well see some Californian Trappist beers in the fairly near future but they're a very interesting brewery as well they're considered by many to be the, some, one of the first craft breweries in the world actually they're, the first, they're at least the first American craft brewery and they're really just very very pioneering but they've also been credited by the Environmental Protection Agency in America as being a very very green company they almost run exclusively on renewable energy but they're now producing in excess I believe of 1 million barrels of beer per year and they've a Apparently had the same brewmaster since 1983. They do have another brewery, I think, out in North Carolina somewhere. I forget where it is. I think it's maybe Mills River, North Carolina, actually. But they've got two breweries now, and like I said, they're considered to be one of the very pioneering American craft breweries. So it is very cool to see one of the traditional German breweries pairing up with one of the kind of pioneering American breweries as well. Germany, of course, has a huge, huge beer heritage, and uh, America really are considered by many to be the home of craft beer these days. So it's a very interesting partnership, and I'm sure we're going to see some very exciting things coming out of Germany in the future as they start playing with these American beer styles. They've got a huge brewing expertise, of course. But that's all you need to know about both both of the breweries just now let's actually get on to the tasting of this beer I've rambled on enough so like I mentioned to you at the start this one is a 5% American Pale Ale I'll just like have a look at the artwork on this before we open it up this is the kind of distinctive style of artwork that you'll see from Brauhaus Legale of course and there uh, you can see there's the little horse you can see that little red stamp there that seems to be the official thing and it just tells you a little bit and about this beer on the top here so it was brewed uh, just basically as a collaboration for the Oktoberfest with, uh, the, with with Ken Grossman from Sierra Nevada. You can see it just tells you a little bit about that in German on the top there. Like I was saying, I believe this beer was first brewed for the Oktoberfest in 2016 and Ken Grossman did, of course, go over to Augsburg and actually enjoy the Oktoberfest there with the guys from Regala. So, yeah, so the hops in this one is Hallertau Mittelfruit, Cascade, Simcoe and Citra and uh, he, Sebastian Piller and the head brewer Frank Muller were joined by Ken Grossman, like I was saying. But a really nice beer. It does give you some tasting notes in German on the back but I'll just ignore that for the moment and taste the beer myself. I do like the bottle cap on that with a little horse actually. Seems to be quite a nice old German symbol but let's get this guy out then and we'll get on with the tasting. So yeah nice smoky opener then. Oh, it's just trying to escape a little bit. Maybe it got stirred up when I had it in the case when I was coming back across but you can smell some of that lovely American fruitiness from these American hops there. This is going to be quite a nice beer I think. But this was one, of course, that was recommended to me by the guys at Getränke Ose, which is a really nice beer store. And they said, oh, you need to try this one. This is a really nice American paleo. So, yeah, as you can see, and as you would kind of maybe expect from an American paleo, this one's poured a really nice kind of bright yellow colour. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of that head. The head, incidentally, is about a third of a finger or a half of a finger. It's fading away, quite a bumpy head rather than being a very foamy one, but, you know, it looks really nice. If I put my fingers behind the glass there, you can see the beer is actually quite opaque in colour, but it, there is some light passing through it. I can see my fingers when I put it round the other side, but it looks 
very nice. And a little bit more yellow than I would have thought for a paleo. Most of the paleos I've seen have been a little bit more amber than that, but the colour doesn't particularly matter. It's more about whether the beer tastes good, and I'm sure it will be when you've got these two breweries of this quality involved in it. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on. That smells pretty good, actually. Yeah, that's a really nice smelling beer. So yeah, with this one, you get what you expect. You've got a nice little bit of that kind of pale, bready malt coming out of it. There's a wee bit of biscuity sweetness in there that I can detect as well. But it does smell really quite nice. And there's a lot of juicy, fruity notes. The way that the hops come out in this one is really interesting because other than these new wave German craft beers that I've been trying, I can't think of uh, all that, of many beers that I've had where it's been the German noble hops that have been mixing with uh, these American fruity hops. A lot of the, the new breweries like to use things like Peril and stuff like that, which is a, high, a slightly higher alpha acid German hop. Mandarina Bavaria, of course, is becoming quite popular as well amongst uh, European brewers. But it's not often that you get something as classic as Hallertau Mittelfru mixing with uh, the likes of Simcoe and Cascade and Citra and stuff. So it is a really quite interesting aroma, this, because you can definitely, you can pick up that nice, typical floral character there. The floral notes that you get out of German noble hops are very, very distinctive. So if you drink German beer quite often, as I do, you do start to pick that up. And there's that little kind of classic, slightly sweet earthiness out of it, some lemongrassy notes. But you can definitely, for me, you can pick up that light grapefruity note that you'd associate with the Cascade. There's a wee bit of that mango note that you'll get from the Citra and some of the passion fruit coming out from the Simcoe as well. And as, as you just, if you go a little bit further back from it, you find I can get a little bit of the, the lychee and almost gooseberry notes that you can pick out from the, the Citra. Usually the Citra is the one that gives you that little bit more kind of complexity. And there's, there's maybe even a wee bit of a, a lemon limey note to this one as well. I would say there's a wee bit of lime in there, it's, it's quite an interesting aroma. And of course, when you have four hops like this mixing together, you can get various things going on. But as I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you actually taste it. That's half the experience when it comes to things like whiskey, craft beer and uh, Japanese sake and stuff like that. But without further ado, let's get stuck into this beer then. So this one is the Bayerische Elswei, a collaboration beer between beer manufacturer Regula from Augsburg in Bayern in Germany and Sierra Nevada from Chico in California. Let's get stuck in. Cheers. Prost. Yeah. That's a pretty nice beer, actually. It kind of... It's really interesting because it has that kind of typical German sessionable feel to it. It's got... It does remind me a little bit of the Hellas in some ways, the Paleo. Like the way the malty character and the noble hops come out of this one, it does remind me a little bit of um, of, of one of some of these German Hellas beers that I've had, but it does have a little bit more of that slightly oily and more bitter mouthfeel that you associate with the American Paleos. It's a really interesting take, this beer. And the first thing you're going to notice with it as well, it's very, very sessionable. You could easily kind of you could easily drink one of these big liter steins of this, but it's a really quite nice beer. The pale ale, I have to admit, when it comes to the pale ale, of course, is the little brother of the IPA, which is the little brother of the double IPA, which again is the little brother of the barley wine. And I have to admit, I more kind of I like to be around the seven or eight percent mark uh, when it comes to these beers. I either like them to be the, the the double IPA or the IPA. The pale ale isn't a style that I drink all that much. But for me, this is one that I think I could I could session a couple of these because it is that nice. It's a really nice beer. And it does have a little bit of that Hellas quality to it, which is maybe why I'm enjoying it quite as much as I am. Because normal as I say, normally the paleo style isn't one that I would go for. I'd more likely go for an IPA than I would a Paleo, but they've done a good job with this. So thumbs up to Regala and to Sierra Nevada, but when you've got breweries of this quality, I don't think it's it's a surprise that it's a good beer. It was actually only rated 80, I think, overall in rate beer and 82 within the style. I have to admit, I can't understand that about this one. It should be rated a bit higher than that. This beer, for me, should be into the 90s. And it's kind of a fusion because, like I said, you can pick up the, the 
the sort of uh, traditional German notes from the noble hops, the middle through hops, but you can also get that nice American fruitiness. But as I always say, sugar the beer around your palate and just let your whole mouth adjust before you analyse the flavour too much, but straight away you're going to recognise this is a good beer. So yeah, with this one, you get a nice in the middle of your palate where all the malty notes come out you get a nice kind of paleo malt there you can feel a little bit of the bready note coming out of it as well I do wonder if they've maybe used some Munich malt just a little bit as well along with some paleo malt in this but it's really um, it is really quite nice. I like the malt base on this one and it does have a little bit of that kind of wetter mouthfeel that you expect of an American Pale Ale. It's quite a refreshing beer at the same time. It's not quite as uh, smooth as some of the ones you're going to come across and that's probably what distinguishes it from being a, a, a German Hellas and from being the American Pale Ale of course. The German Hellas beers are always very very smooth I find but this one just has a little bit more activity to the carbonation. But that's nice. Certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. If you just go right to the middle of your palate, there's a wee bit of biscuity sweetness there, but overall, the malt base is kind of bready and it's mainly a paleo malt, but I do think there's a wee element of Munich malt in there as well. On the hoppy side of things, in the back corners of the palate, you can pick up a little bit of that earthiness I was talking about, that kind of trademark, slightly sweet earthiness that you'd associate with these kind of German noble hops. As you come further forward along the sides of your palate, there's a nice floral aromaticity there. You can feel it's a little bit more bitter on the front corner of the palate, and as you go round the very front curve of the tongue, you can feel that quite strong lemony citric note, and that's going to be from a mixture of all the hops in this they can give you a fairly strong citrusy note but just behind the front curve of the palate that's where you're going to get this little oily bubble where all the nice kind of pardon me juicy fruity esters come out but that is nice so yeah with this one I can feel there's a little bit of the grapefruit kind of underpinning this the cascade is coming out really quite nicely you can feel that just underpinning the beer and I think the cascade and the the metal fruit are probably going to be the main hops that they've used in this one because you do st you do start to get a little bit more of the other ones a wee bit later on but I think I do suspect from the flavour that they've been added a little bit later in the brew but yeah the grapefruit kind of underpins it a little bit there's a good bit of that kind of citricky note that lemongrassy citricky note that you associate with the, the noble hops of course in there as well but as the flavour progresses you can pick out a little bit of the passion fruit from the Simcoe as well and there's also a bit of the mango from the Citra and as you go further and further and further into the flavour you'll start to get a little bit of the kind of gooseberry note as well that you, you get from the Citra. The Citra of course is one of the ones that gives you a lot of these complexities as you go further and further into the aftertaste but overall it's a really nice paleo this one. It's got a slightly different feel to it than some of the other ones I've come across from America. To me this beer comes across as a little bit of a hybrid actually and that's what makes it interesting when you've reviewed about 1100 beers on a YouTube channel you do want things that are going to test your palate a little bit and this one does that for me but it's a really nice beer. I wish I had one of these kind of big steins. It would be lovely to try this one on tap in Germany and just see how it comes across as one of these kind of fast beers that you get in the Brauhaus but it's certainly a very good paleo and I wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. I think that's a good way to kind of sum this one up. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel then, uh, I would say some, it's, a bit, it's light to mid-bodied. It's on the, the lighter end of mid-bodied, I would say, if anything. The carbonation does have a little bit of activity to it. As I was saying, the flavour, the way the malt base comes across, it reminds me a little bit of the Munich Hellas in some ways, with the, just a little bit of that bready malt. But this has a bit more carbonation than you would normally expect from the Hellas for me. The mouthfeel has a little bit of oily character, but it's more of a wet mouthfeel I'm getting from this one rather than oily. The carbon, the, sorry, not the carbonation, there's a good little bit of hoppy bitterness to this one. You can feel that around the edge of your palate. There's some nice juicy fruity characters in there. And then the malt base is quite smooth, but it does have a little bit of kind of biscuity sweetness to it as well. But overall, it's a really nice American paleo. To me, it comes across as a little bit of a hybrid. There are elements, I think, in that of the, uh, the Munich style Hellas, but it suits the beer really well. And it's certainly a very good kind of summer sessionable uh, American paleo. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again and like I said the novelty of this beer is that you're seeing 
a, a collaboration between a, a really famous Augsburg brewery, of course, and then one of the American kind of pioneering craft breweries as well. So it's a very unique beer and one that I do recommend you try. I'm glad the guys at Getränke Osa actually recommended this to me. But yeah, really, really interesting beer, this one, and I'm glad I was able to review it for you. So yeah, thank you once again for watching my beer review. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Do let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below if you've been lucky enough to try it. And do let me know what your favourite beers are, both from Sierra Nevada. I've reviewed quite a few of those. But do let me know what your favourite beers are from Regale Beer Manufacturer and hopefully I can review a few more of those for you at some point in the future. But once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. I will catch you very soon. Make sure you check out all the usual social media. Let me know your own thoughts in the comment section below and I will catch you guys very soon. Make sure you check out my friend Peter over at The Clueless Drinker as well and he'll be able to keep you up to date on the German beer scene. But this one was really cool. The Bayerische Ale Zwei from Brauhaus Regale in Augsburg and Sierra Nevada over in Chico and California. Prost.